And welcome back, everyone, to Friend or Foe Season 7, the final season, of course. My name is Rare Adam. Alongside me is Crims from Art of War Esports. How are you doing today, Crims? Oh, just super good after that last game. It really pumped me up. And, uh, yeah, you know, just losing a game feels great. I just love it. So <laughs> I'm definitely feeling great right after that one. Of course, but we do have two other competitors on the rift here right now. Pentakill Timo, please, versus Blue Bayou Zoo, or as I like to call them, BBZ, because I'm Canadian. So I'm going to use that at every opportunity that I get. Both of these teams coming off of a win yesterday and already into draft we go. All the bands there on the bottom, all the picks coming through, all the Timo hovers coming through for PTP as well. Looking pretty standard so far, nothing too crazy coming off the board quite yet. Yeah, I think that for the picks going on so far, I think the biggest disparity I see here is the Kindred in the J4. I think everyone's pretty knowledgeable on the fact that that's not the best matchup for the J4. Ash coming out, I mean, Rare Adam, this pick is just soaring in popularity. The new Trinity Force build, which will be nerfed here, but everyone really likes this pick right now. And for the laning phase, it's just such a great champion. Yeah, fantastic stuff to come through from that bot lane to give you a little bit of pressure going the opposite way, especially with Vanal and Threshlight. You know, Threshlight getting that signature Thresh champion, but Vanal pulling out the Kai'Sa instead of the Vayne. You know, don't want to blind pick that champion. Uh, Kai'Sa, you know, sort of has that Vayne-esque style that a lot of these newer ADCs have. So I want to see how they can actually perform there. But of course, going into Ash Leona, you have to take that cleanse. You have to be very careful about that early pressure coming through from the Kindred as well. So I'm curious to see how the bot lane plays out, especially considering Red, known previously as a championship top laner, championship jungler, has played a little bit of mid lane as well, playing ADC for this BBZ team, which uh, should be a little bit interesting because in fact, I was supposed to be on this team until scheduling conflicts arose. And I was going to be doing with Yanni on the bottom side, another caster of mine. So just giving my little shout out there to BBZ, knowing that they're a team that do have a lot of capabilities there, but of course, filling in with Fire Mana and Jacob Dudar, two very capable replacements in their own right. Yeah, I mean, you're a well-known player in FOF as well here. So Syndra, oh, cool. it looks it looks like there's a lot of single target burst damage and CC coming out from BBZ here. And yeah, that cleanse is looking more delectable as the draft goes on. Uh, 
And I mean, this Teemo hover, as always, is just going to come through for every single one because it is time to kill Teemo, yep. please. They're going to shout out their mascot at every single opportunity. The Malzahar, though, going to come through as that answer. And this is a champion that hasn't been as popular at the highest level, but still quite popular in FOF. Really great wave clear. You know, you've got that lockdown as well. But as you were mentioning, a lot of single target on both of these teams here. The Syndra, the Ash, the Leona to lock someone down on the opposite side. Kaisa great at single target DPS. Thrash gonna be locking someone down. Malzahar gonna lock someone down. But now you're sort of supplanting that with some tankier top laners. Yeah, so the yeah, the Orn comes out, super long engage range there, and the Cassante in tow. Interesting top lane matchup. I do think Cassante takes a little bit of L, but Man, there is a lot of CC going on in this game, and I'm I'm ready for it to start up. Yeah, and I think in a lot of senses as well, with just the general level of play, you want to get as much crowd control as possible because it makes your team fights easier. You lock someone down, they can't move. You can't fight back against that. You can pay, maybe cleanse out of it. You can maybe QSS or something along those oh. lines to get out of dodge. But already we are getting in here and. Already an O coming through. Vanal yeah. does not have class. Yeah, I'm wondering what the thought process. I mean, I guess you could dodge all the CC or Adam. Uh, this is a skill check in that way. But Champion Red here says, yeah, I'm just going to take the cleanse. The tried and true, something that we all know will work. Uh, unfortunately, not against Malzahar there. So, so that is going to disincentivize the QSS, but shouldn't be in range. But yeah, Vanal uh, just wants to dodge everything. That is a gutsy move. Oh, and Invade, they're starting up. Yeah, they want to get a little bit of prio. They get that ward as well. Good to get a little bit more information down. At the very least, they'll have information on where Gandorf wants to start it out here. But of course, on that flip side for BBZ. You just want to try and find as much early prior as possible. You get that Ash, you want to shove that lane in. You get the Cassanti on the top side who can sort of have a little bit of fun with the Orn, especially in the earlier levels there. And then, of course, a Fire Mana in that mid lane. You, know, you have a little bit more pressure on Malzahar there from the Pro DH, but mm -hmm. Malzahar is just going to sit there, farm up uh, as my past mid laner. Katarina Duku said, I've never had fun playing Malzahar in my life, but at the very least, Pro DH <laughs> is going to make sure Fire Mana has less fun in that mid lane because playing against Malzahar is just as bad as playing Malzahar. Yeah, I mean, well, playing against it is definitely not as fun as playing it. This And that's just a low bar already. So <laughs> yeah, ruining, <exactly>. everyone's <laughs> ruining everyone's day here. I'm sure Dax is well aware that the, wants to be invading on this Kindred just for the early kills. Getting marks is something that is super important to every Kindred player and everyone who is in the jungle. So we'll see where Dex gets that invade through this bottom side here. They should have pressure with this Ash Leona lane. Yeah, and of course, getting level two early means that oh, engage nice to come through. Send of the Blade will land, but good play coming through from Thrushlight to keep Vanal safe, and nothing ends up coming out of the play. They're just sort of vibing for the time being, but you can see that pressure that we were talking about. Ash Leona is going to have that shove advantage at all times because Vanal doesn't really have the same level of wave clear. Doesn't have the volley, has the Kathian rain, but it's not really the same. It doesn't hit the same until you get to those upgraded missiles. Yeah, it doesn't hit the same. I have to agree. And also, it it just doesn't really get the HP burst when they're full HP the same that Nash can do. Okay, engaging here. Yeah, Dax looking for a little bit of action. At least going to force the flash of the pro Go over it here. Oh my goodness, oh. goes a little bit too deep, and Gandorf going to turn that one around. Flag and drag first blood for PTP. Proti H living up the sliver and Dax gets punished for the aggression. Okay, that, that hurt my soul. Ah, uh, Dax there. I mean, you say aggression, but I mean, that was just seeing blood red in his eyes. Just wanted the kill so bad. I, I can't imagine how you think that that's worth it. You already got the flash. I think we have to agree. You just, you just take what you're given. Yeah, in a sense, I think might have been a miscommunication between Dax and Fire Mana there because you look at the Syndra, she's full HP, basically full mana, and now oh, has to worry about sense. Gandorf, good scatter of the week to get the Jarvan out of there. But at the very least, so close yet so far, and that aggression gets punished in kind. And at this point, you've got to like PTP's position because Gandorf has that first blood. Great to have that on the Jarvan. When a hook lands onto Red and you get a nice chunk of 300 damage, you're going to be pretty happy on the bot side as well. I think something that's really important to note when you have Kindred in your game is that it's very necessary that Kindred is a threat. Needs to be able to do damage. Needs to be able to take their HP bars down low when she pops Lamb's Respite. And so if Kindred is behind, that is not a good look for BBZ here. I'm not saying it's all over, but it's definitely something they have to look to remedy as this game continues. 
Yeah, and you can see the aggression that Gandwarf is going to continue to put onto this mid lane. Fire Mana still has that flash available, but they just want to consistently punish this Syndra as much as possible in the early stages, prevent her from getting a reset, or at least not a good reset. She's going to be able to get one off here, likely teleporting back with that lost chapter. But at the very least, Proteach has played this early stage well, where sometimes as Malzahar, you can't really fight back as much because, you know, your Malefic Visions don't do as much damage as you want. You don't have the burst that Syndra has. But in this situation, mm -hmm. Proteh has done a great job of neutralizing that lane, exactly what a Malzahar wants to do, prevent the enemy from having any fun, which includes getting kills. Yeah, I think part of the reason why no one likes playing against Malzahar is you kind of have to play a Cold War against him where you don't really directly fight, but you fight through the minion wave. And if you try to fight Malzahar too early, you know, all the minions come out. He has his little Voidlings, yeah, and you just get Malefic Visions... And so it's it just turns this game into basically a push war, and Malzahar wins that. So that's why the pressure coming out from this Malzahar is so key into shutting down that Syndra, and also doesn't give Dax a lane to play through as well. And they tried to force something early to cheese Syndra ahead, and it really didn't pay off here. And so we'll see if Gendorf can take over this early game and really set his team ahead, and a Dragon is a great start. Yeah, that's one way to get an advantage in that early game or continue to take that over. Gandorf of note has not reset, so is going to be sitting on a nice chunk of change in the jungle and just continuing to clear, working towards that level six. Because at level six, you can punish Dax here, who still doesn't have that flash. If you can get it quickly enough, just shut him down with, of course, the Nether Grasp. Just get that Jarvan to come through with that extra early game damage. You're going to be cooking with gas there. Of course, the rest of the map, though, still relatively quiet. Really boring at this point, honestly. You know, Jaffe wants to get a little bit aggressive there, but it's an Orn. You're not really going to do much to Shenpai quite yet, but nice little hook going to land on red. At least going to force out that cleanse. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of just sit and do nothing lanes here. And uh, both sides of the matchup, Cassante versus the Orn, Orn they're just going to chill. Not very good for Cassante in the mid lane. We talked about that one. I do want to point out, level 6 on the J4 is huge for a bot lane play. So if that ever happens, I think Vaynol and Threshlight might be seeing a big advantage that they can use to snowball the game. But on the flip side of the map here, Rift Herald is going to be the next objective, and it looks like both teams are stacking up for it. And I have to say, just due to the level 6 right now, Dax gets level 6, that's going to be big for the Rift Herald. I'm not sure quite how much EXP he has, otherwise Ganondorf racing for level 6 himself. Yeah, Gandorf has a little bit of that advantage from getting that early kill, but we don't know how much Dax has picked up from lanes, Wait, potentially. Invade? Yeah, might oh. be going for that invade, and Gandorf just fearless at this point, knowing that Proteh is going to get that push through mid, knowing that Shenpai is currently pushing on that top okay. side, and Jax is going to have trouble answering, but already going in, at least going to cause issues for Dax. Dax doesn't have Smite of note. Of course, the camera looking at bot lane threshold taking know, right? a little bit of damage. <laughs> we're just looking at the little map in the corner. We're like, oh, oh this is I think huge. they just give it over here. Gandorf is should be able to get that. Yeah, there smites it away. That's gonna deny Dax a lot of that fighting power around that herald that you were talking about. Because Kindred with red buff is excellent. Whereas on the flip side, Kindred without red buff is not excellent. She's just okay. yeah, doesn't you can't chase people down, can't kite. Health regen is always nice. I'd like to see the exp on Dax though if we could get that, because honestly, that is extremely, extremely important as we do have the gold coming up. And nice little advantage just... for Gandorf. Yeah, was well, a little advantage for Gandorf there. So if we click, okay, so that's about two go. camps away. Oh, uh, he might get it on this one, depending on the level of the Gromp, oh, and go, he yeah. does. Oh, the before J4, that's amazing. I, uh, so I guess Gandorf kind of just wasting too much time on the map actually is one camp behind according to the jungle items and hits level six second. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a later six, but of course, action on the map right now, sort of at a standstill, not a whole lot going on. Of course, Dax with that mark as well, got one of the, the oh my goodness, the Scuttle Crabs here already picked up. I was going to say Rocks, then Raptors, oh, all the camps coming through. The Raptors going to be marked, they're just going to rotate up for that, not going to let Dax get any sort of extra advantages off of the neutrals here. Thus far, still just a rather slow start after that early aggressive play from Dax. Everything has sort of fallen back into the standstill as we just farm it out here. Best part of League of Legends is the early game where nothing <laughs> happens unless you make it happen. And that's exactly what's happening. Nothing is happening because no one's making it happen. Yeah, you can really tell because I'm trying to hype up a level six Kindred level <laughs> up. Uh, that's the most exciting thing that happened in the past six minutes or so. Okay, hold up. 
We might be getting a dead Leona. Mm. Oh, wait, flash reverse. forward from Jacob Dudar. The arrow going to come down. Not going to land onto anyone. Dax taking a whole bunch Maybe of damage. Low. Cannot use oh. that Lem's respite. Gets dunked down. It is a trade back from Firemana with the unleashed power. But now Shenpai's here with the Orin Horn. Here comes Vanel coming in to pick one up on Jacob Dudar. It ends up being a two for one in favor of PTP as they rotate over there after Herald. Yeah, I have to wonder, did... I guess you have to pop the ultimate there on Kindred. The situation was dire and gets completely destroyed by the J4 burst that you were talking about earlier. Rare. And the prize is the Rift Herald. One of the best items at snowballing the game. And I mean, look, we could, uh, we could give this game a nice positive view by saying it's macro focused here. And so this Rift Herald is going to be helping Pentakill Teemo really setting up their snowball. And I do wonder, where do you think they're going to place it? I, I guess the bot lane makes the most sense, but getting yeah. ahead of Syndra is pretty good. Yeah, I think it just depends on where the next fight occurs as well. Depends on when Gw Gandorf wants to use that next Cataclysm to make some action happen. But you can see the answer from BBZ here. And this is why this is a team that is so well revered here in FOF. The fact that they're willing to find some trades regardless. Get two plates onto Jaffe on the top side. Get a plate onto Red on the bottom side. Get an invade down from Dax as well off the back of their death. And they're still going to be keeping pace at the very least. Yes, you get that Rift Herald, but a big thing I like to point out, plates are guaranteed money. A Rift Herald is only potential there. You have to drop that down. You have to get those two plates. You have to push the advantage, the pressure that it gives you. And right now, with this dragon already spawned on the map and Gandorf on a reset, seems as if BBZ are going to be able to take advantage of that still. Yeah, that, that late reset there is playing huge. Dex somehow after dying, manages to steal away the red buff and get a dragon secure as well. And so they're really just playing off the timing here as Gandorf has yet to drop that Rift Herald. Top side play, Jaffe getting quite low. Shenpai doing his best Ooh, uh -oh. to protect the turret. Oh, and I thought yeah, was the Cassandra shield. Oh, but it's going to be a little bit of a chase down. None of them have mana, though. The grass oh. proc going to be doing a little bit. There it is. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Jaffe has to flash away. Shenpai not going to follow suit. I guess didn't quite have enough mana to follow up with that. But a hook landing on this bottom side. Dax is here as well, as is Gandorf. It's a fight on multiple fronts here. Jacob Dude are going to be staying alive, but goes oh. out of the limbs respite with the Zenith Blade. Dax going to be followed up here. A big dunk coming down. And now all oh, the TVs. teleports going down. There's three teleports coming down to the bottom lane. It's about to be an absolute fiesta. Jaffe going to be chasing someone down here as well. Fireman are going to pick up Vanel. It's going to be Jaffe picking up Threshlight on the opposite side. But now Jaffe's in trouble. Gets a nice knockback onto multiple members. The Ornhorn going to miss as well. Gandorf living with a sliver. It's going to have a grass landing onto Jaffe as well, who is an all out for him, but it's all out of health as well. Oh, Fireman are going to come on on the back end of this fight. Champion Red getting chased down. It's a flash forward from Shenpai. That makes it a double kill. And now a 2v1 for Firemana. The Pro DH is an absolute pest on the back end of this one. Firemana should be able to get out alive here at the very least. But what a chaotic fight on the bottom side. Ends up going relatively even. Ends up being a four for three actually in favor on the side of PTP, but they might not be done quite yet. Shenpai has to get out of dodge here. Last little tick there on Dax's E. Not quite going to land either. And now Dax needs to run and turn it tail. When all is said and done, PTP end up with an 1,000 gold lead. You know, Rare, I was a little scared for you that it would be two team fights back to back. <laughs> but it was narrowly avoided at the last second there. And another funny thing is the, the Rift Trail just sneaking right up to the bot lane turret during the whole team fight and gets a crash in as well. Uh, Ninja Rift Trail as, I mean, a big win for the side of Pentakill Teemo. Yeah, it ends up being a win because they burn both of those teleports off of Fire Mana and Jaffe on the opposite side. Proteach didn't have theirs up, but now we'll have that teleport advantage at least for the next couple of minutes or so. Threshlight practicing the hooks on the cannon minion might actually get punished for that as well. Flayed back, but the arrow lands. Threshlight is deceased. The light is out as Red picks one up. Call him champion because they just picked themselves up their first kill. That was beautifully done as well. The stun was comboed and chained perfectly. Didn't seem like Threshlight could do much. Besides, I guess, Flay, Leona into the turret. But beyond that, it just looked like a clean kill and a straight win in that bot side here, making that gold lead really close again. These teams really neck and neck in the early game. Yeah, and an interesting thing is that 
this roster built by BBZ, built by Red and Dax here, has sort of been adjusted to fit their playstyles as much as possible. Red is going to play those champions that can enable on the bottom side of the map. It's not going to be you know, the most incredible laner, but still has a little bit of an advantage. Still is able to press those advantages moving forward. Fire Mana in this mid lane was just able to go down bot lane, pick up three kills for themselves, refused to elaborate, and now has a gold lead over Pro DH. And we talked about how annoying it is to play against that Malzahar. You just have to play away from the Malzahar and you're able to find three kills. Not bad. Yeah, Malzahar with the suppression is just so good in these mini skirmishes. And so playing away from the Malzahar at this moment is a great idea as you're talking about. In the 5v5, Sam's just going to have much more power. Shen Pai just going to go ahead and charge away. And Dax just loves taking turret shots rare. Yeah, Dax just loves to play aggressive. I think that's the major thing. But unfortunately, you can see on the flip side, it has led to them uh, faltering a couple of times here. Well, three times to be exact. And if we look at the marks here, just got our producer to pull that up. We can see exactly where they are in that progress because a big marker is at four mark point. Two marks at this point, but Jaffe about to find their mark onto Shenpai. Shuts them down. That's a nice little solo kill for themselves. Jaffe doing Cassante things. Yeah, Cassante is... Oh, oh, here you go. Another fight starting up. Yeah, Arrow landing onto Gandorf. Long <laughs> Lantern going to be pulling him back. Gandorf even going to get out with that flag and drag. Look at that mobility coming through from the Jarvan Thresh combo to survive the engage. But with Dragon spawning in about 30 seconds here, you have to be careful about some of these summoner spells that are coming up as well. Shenpai's TP going to be available. Jaffe, Fireman are both going to have those available. This could be another fight to the death here around this Infernal Dragon. It looks like BBZ, though, have a better setup right now currently due to these ward positionings, but we'll see who's going to wrestle control in those 15 seconds here. Shenpai already roaming up. Jaffe a little bit late, but does have the TP waiting for them to take down, and that could be a potential flank. That'd be very dangerous to someone like Vainal here. And so now it looks like it's just going to be the 5v5 setup, and we were talking about, you know, Syndra having more of an advantage versus the Orn here with that Radiant Virtue going to be very good in the front line. And with these backs being delayed here look at this leona is just so far behind Ooh. champion red so far behind this dragon is gonna be completely handed over yeah they got caught napping here a little bit of damage coming through from fireman but shenpai is playing a distractor here just gonna prevent them from finding the engage there might be a fight that breaks out after this though if they stick around for too long shenpai's in that front line gandorf just gonna flag and drag out of there the box actually going to be invested as well but as is the enchanted crystal arrow lots of damage coming down to the threshold threshold is removed as is shenpai and now the chase down begins 5v3 do they continue the engage they do not they back out as despite the dragon going over to PTP, it is BBZ now expanding themselves up a 1.5 thousand gold lead. Yeah, they're a bit lackadaisical on their exit there and don't know if they were trying to fight, trying to get away. And in the end, they do give two kills away. Ooh. Oh, oh, and a flash out. Okay, yeah. second thought that. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the classic Jarvan move. It's like the Lee Syndrome. You're like, I'm going to go in. Oh, no, there's three of them there. Let me get out of dodge. <laughs> Max, though, taking a little bit of damage here that Leandri is starting to stack oh, up some damage play. on the Pro DH, and here they come. Tower taken down in that mid lane, but meanwhile, bot side, Shenpai has arrived from the side. Lamb's respite gonna come through, as is the Solar Flare, but everyone is locked up despite the invulnerability. They will both get shut down. Jacob Dudar, number two, gonna be falling to Jacob Dudar, number three, as they take the third death of the game. Three kills coming back the opposite way. PTP say, hold the phone, not done yet. Yeah, they make another play to bridge the gap in the gold, which is just, I mean, it's just a roller coaster right now. Up and down, blue, red. We don't know which side the gold lead wants to take here, but that is an excellently well done fight. Going to gain them two turrets, it looks like here. Yeah. And something I have to note is just that's why it's so important to have your tank in the fight as Kindred, because if you don't have him there, the CC is going to come and lock you up. Mm. They're trying their best defense. And, I mean, a Jarvan, the build is a squishy build. That is not yeah. a tanky Jarvan. And so just face taking a Syndra, not a good idea. Exactly. Just takes it on the chin. 5-0-1 on fire mana. They are becoming the member to keep an eye on here. Absolutely firing on all cylinders with all that mana that they've got. Name checks out in this situation. At least for Pentakill, Teemo, please. They are forced back into their side of the map here. Might actually get chased down here as Threshlight. This backs off a little bit more, but it seems as if a trade going to come back the opposite way as four members on this bot side means that the bot lane tower is now traded. Trades upon trades upon trades, continuing the sinusoidal wave that has come through from this gold graph. Yeah, the chess game known as League of Legends here, the turns, and looks like 
Right now, it's gonna be Pentakill Teemo's turn. As... <laughs> the oh. Jaffy. Yeah. He's doing the Jaffy. He's doing the thing doing where he it. just takes Rift Herald all by his lonesome because no one's on that side of the map. Gendorf fishing for the flag and drag, but not gonna pick that up. And you can see this defense, this macro centric gameplay. We were sort of using that as a little bit of a jab earlier, but now you can really see that coming through. It's just trades upon trades. Jaffy picking up that Rift Herald, Proti H picking up that mid lane tower. Four members towards that bot side, trying to find something else with Dragon spawning in two minutes. Surely we'll get another fight around that objective. You don't want to be oh, giving no. over Soul Point if you're the Pro side of BBZ. You might find a fight a little bit earlier here as Fire Mana looking for Hero. it. A long range arrow just barely misses. That's one of those ones where you're like, ooh, Project Ash arrow looks a little bit sketchy. You never know if that one's going to land, but Dax, going to take a little bit of a trade with Shempai, might be rethinking that trade now. Oh, they're fighting in a choke. Both teams here could be potentially very dangerous on either <laughs> side. And they both say, nope, we don't want to fight in the juggle. Yeah, playing with our emotions a little bit, potentially setting up for a play, but with Baron spawning right now, surely no one just takes it off the rep. Yeah, they're, they're too scared. They know what negative Man, what effects kind of team it may have. Would just uh, call Baron right about 20 minutes and start a fight and throw the game. Who would do mm. that, Baron? Yeah, who, 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 who would, would do that? that? <laughs> oh, I, I gotta dig into the annals of FOF history to think about those ones. No, I can think of like half Is there the a team that's really famous that. around throwing Baron? Because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You're the expert here. <laughs> I, it's hard to say as well, you know. How am I the expert? I played for one season. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to play anymore. I'm just going to keep my title, put it up there on the throne. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's any teams that are famous for Baron throws. Twitch chat can tell us afterwards. We'll find out after the game or whatever and can tell us where we're right and where we're wrong. Yeah. I am right about one thing. Shenpai is not going to take this fight as Red just going to leave. Gonna clean up that wave and Shenpai continuing to scale, waiting for those ornaments. And that's something we haven't really talked about now. 21 minutes into the game, we have to keep in mind these augments that are coming through. Not the augments, the ornaments. So used to playing TFT. Yeah, augment, augment is uh, Victor, right? That's Victor. Yeah, the, the augments yeah. is TFT. You know what? There's there's like an Orn legend and everything in TFT now. He's everywhere at this point. Jaffe is about to be all over the score sheet, though, at this point as he's getting hit. Covered by multiple members. Threshlight trying to cut off the angles as well, but a teleport now going to come down. Fire mana dominating six kills for themselves. All Jacob right, Budar going to try and slow it down. Shenpai looking for the Ornhorn, going to land it onto Fire mana. That is target number one. Lots of damage coming out from the Orn as Vanal takes it down. Jacob Dudar on the side. Red has arrived. No arrow, no problem. It's just a one fight for PTP as they take control once again over this dragon. Granted, Dax is here, has that smite available. Will they go for it? No flash though, which might dissuade the play. BBZ sticking around. This Ooh, is risky. looking for it. That's just going to be secured up by Gandorf. Dax now has to pop that Lamb's Respite. Taking a decent chunk of damage. Going over the wall. Oh. Finds Fireman as well. Has to go golden as Vanal is unstoppable now. Fireman are going to be taken down as well. Will find the trade. So it's shut down for shut down. But at the end of the day, PTP once again execute on their game plan. And they now have themselves a nice, healthy amount of gold in the pocket. Nice, healthy three dragons in the pocket. And a nice, healthy red to put up on the mantle. And now they turn their thoughts towards this Baron. With only two members alive, this could get dicey for BBZ. This game could start to snowball in favor of PTP. It is important to note they don't have their AD carry here, so that's going to really prevent oh, them from speeding through this Baron as well. I mean, I guess uh, yeah, they don't have their jungler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I didn't say anything. As Valzahar here, you do a brunt of the work on this Baron, and the despite the delay, they get a five-man Baron on the side of PTP. They get the team fight victory, and they get another dragon in their back pocket. BB push down mid lane is going to trade down the mid lane here, but I mean, we're at him. I mean, this is definitely a suspicious position to be in. I would not want to be in BBZ spot at the moment. They still have a sh shot at winning just through pure team fighting. They're only 3k behind, but you have to be worried for them if you're a BBZ fan. Yeah, you have to have worries for both of these teams, though, because you can see BBZ are still trying to find their positioning. There is a almost three item syndra on the opposite side fire mana can blow up absolutely oh, anyone oh, on oh. the opposite side red nice little movement speed buff there from the trinity force making all the difference in that exchange but now the positioning comes around thrashlight gonna go forward gonna find that hook as well and now that's gonna be at least some members falling red Got in that back line up. getting absolutely destroyed jacob dudar is next to fall fire mana is not able to reply in kind no hat no damage, not going to be able to find any kills the opposite way as PTP look to end this game on a high note. 24 minutes in, that Baron is going to do hella damage to the side of BBZ as they try and hold the line. 
with what? Fire mana specifically, especially it takes a whole chunk of damage, but we'll have to back off still. Unfortunately though, there is a huge board in your face, Shenpai, just an absolute mountain in this game. And they are not able to budge this Orn. They get that mid inhib. They have more turrets to take, but that's just more gold lead that they can pick up here. And it looks like finally, I, this is the real, the real huge advantage by either team. And Pentakill Teemo are the ones taking it. And I want to take a peek at the individual gold leads as well, because at this point, you know, 5,000 gold in the lead for PTP. Wait, there might be a fight starting here. to become substantial, but you know, we might have to hold that thought for now. Jaffe just going to get slowed up by the Malefic Visions. The voices in the head are not helping out. And yeah, i be able to get a look at that shortly. Vainal just going to be tossing one out there for the homies, but with a minute left on Baron, seems as if they're just going to go back into their inventory, spend a little bit of that money. You can see those three items completed on fire mana, but on the opposite side, it's two and a half items on the Jarvan. It's two and a half items on the Orn. It's getting to the point, I believe, Vanel should have enough for that third item shortly here. Probably resetting for that Nasher's Tooth. Yep, there it is. And now this Kaisa is becoming an absolute threat. Eight kills just sort of quietly has had a very strong game for themselves. I mean, Vanel playing pretty well around the tanks in the CC really bodes well for a kit that there is an Orn here and the Thresh can really get that burst damage in onto squishy targets and so is playing the adk role very well and of course gandorf is just an absolute monster now has the frozen heart so that's going to be reducing the damage of champion red and dax here by a pretty good margin and that's just good itemization coming out of the jungler of ptp yeah, Gandwarf doing a great job of just being an enabler, knowing that, you know, Jarvan does have that damage, but wants to sort of enable the rest of the team. Getting that black clear at the very least to cut through any armor that may come through is a good option. On the opposite side, though, Vanel has gone for this sort of AP on hit build. A little bit of an interesting choice coming down. I'd be curious to see if there's a static shiv, potentially, as that fourth item. We've talked a lot about oh how that item I'll, is uh, quite strong say. right now. No one has built it quite yet, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll hold my thoughts on that until we see it, because if it does come to be, Anil's going to be doing a lot of damage to everyone. I was going to say, there was no uh, Static Shiv Abuser champions in the game, but now you're kind of dashing my hopes of that. Everyone's a Static yeah. Shiv Abuser. I, I mean, eventually it becomes an item that everyone should buy. Uh, yeah. It looks like BBZ are just barreling down the mid lane, and this might just be their death trap could be their death trap or it could be the death oh. trap for ptp shenpai forced to flash away already Prody h though is just sitting on the side lane being a pest on that malzahar as we were talking about with this dragon spawn as well they push that mid lane and they get all of that priority and now they can refocus this fight across the jungle here at dax trying to steal that away i'm not sure if they were successful great scatter of the week though gonna land onto two members gonna get shut down is Threshlight, though, is fire mana. Able to find another one in that front line, though. Jaffe is being a big beefy oh, boy, getting suppressed as well. Vanel is so low. Jaffe gonna have to jump out in that Lamb's Respite. Gandorf still going in. They're still looking for more damage. Prody H is here as well. The damage is spreading, but it's Red who picks up another one. Vanel has absolutely no health to deal with now. Jacob Dudar in that front line. Vanel trying to contribute in anything that they can, but they are absolutely unable to. BBZ are turning this game around on its head. The Prody H will be the next to fall. Dax flashing forward that aggression. Finally, coming to find some use. Banal able to return one onto fire mana, but now has to get out of here as red. Looking, looking, not going to be able to find anything more. At the very least, it stalls out soul. And what a fight from BBZ. Yeah, that was well executed. They had that front to back just the way they wanted it, and they were able to waste so many resources from Penta Kill. And then they were able to return fire as okay that is the exit from vanal there i mean that stun q combo onto vanal just really set the pace of the team fight there was not that much kaisa damage and that was basically the team fight winner right there coming out from fire mana yeah and now you look at the state of this game yes that inhibitor is down but it's respawning just in time for this baron to spawn as well you really have to look at those summoner spells that were used vanal gonna have that flash available at the very least as is threshlight as is gandwarf so there's some good tools there but if they get on top of pro dh and that ultimate isn't used onto the right target it could be detrimental on the flip side though not a whole lot of spells for the side of bbz they used everything and the kitchen sink to try and fight that one yep they're able to stop the soul. They're able to find a lot of shutdowns going their way. The gold lead has now shrunk itself down to about 1,300 gold. At this point in the game, it's not very substantial as Vanal now in a little bit of trouble. Jaffe, 
just sort of holding the line, but look at the damage coming through from Venal, especially on those Void Seekers. Both teams here jockeying for position on this Baron. And it looks like BBZ are going to be second. However, they are able to pull out great team fights. We'll see if they can do it again here. Once they get into proper position, it is going to be difficult to budge them with that Kindred. And, I mean, Fireman are just pumping out the damage on this Syndra here. Really becoming a just FOF classic pick. I mean, so many people are doing well in this champion, and once you get to this point in the game, Rare, I mean, this this champion just does so much single-target burst damage. All right, let's have a little bit of a trivia question for you here while we have a little bit of a pause in the uh, action. What is the Gwinsu's Orn upgrade called? Oh, man, you... You're testing the wrong knowledge of me. I don't know. It's a fun name. It's actually called Seeding Sorrow, and that might just be what they're feeling in this fight. Just oh. barely secured is that Baron. Thrashlight Force all the way out. Gandorf trying to play Disruptor on the front line. Shenpai going to get a nice little knockup under red. Going into the back line is Gandorf, but he's taking so much damage. He might be taken down. That is the first one to fall. Flip side of that fight, though. Jampi will also fall. Vanal taking a lot of damage. Shenpai in this front line, though, being an absolute pass. Look at the damage that red no, he doesn't exist. Vanal going into the back line, looking for a little bit more. Will be able to potentially find a third kill. Looking for even more in the Lamb's Respite. There are two members very low. While Vanal gets shut down, the rest of BBZ are sure to fall. Dax just barely going to stay oh. alive with that QSS at the last second to <laughs> potentially drop it. I, there was no ignite. There was an ignite, possibly, from Thrashlight. But four kills to two, the Baron goes the way of PTP, and it was a fake comeback all along for BBZ, at least for the time being. Not sure if they can end the game, but they're going to come pretty damn close. And Shenpai, I mean, just face-taking the entire team, comes out of it alive as well. Uh, this Orin, I mean, such a crazy champion here. They're going to go for the end. It looks like Dax has to stall for at least five seconds, and... They're going to back they, off. Yeah, they're going to realize that that's not enough time. We don't have enough damage in our champions here. And I mean, look, Vanal uh, didn't make it out of the team fight, but did so much damage before dropping. And hold up, do I see still has a 300 gold bounty despite dying in the last team fight? Yeah, absolutely massive Ooh. at this stage. You know, full item up on red, basically a full item up on everyone else in the game, except maybe Gandorf who has some of those cheaper items. But nonetheless, this has been a fantastic performance coming through from Vanal, a player that last season sort of left a little bit to be desired in terms of the expectations, didn't have the run that they were potentially looking for. But now, sort of revitalizing this last season, has a little bit more of that support around them. You know, Threshlight getting their signature Thresh is a great way to sort of set up Vanal for success. And now, with a minute left until this dragon spawns, this could be the deciding fight right here. That Baron just going to be wearing off as it comes through, but Infernal Soul for the side of PTP will be absolutely massive, considering the seething sorrow will destroy anyone who stands in their path. The damage coming through from Kais, as you mentioned, absolutely insane at this point to any target. Yeah, I mean, Kais will just absolutely eviscerate someone. Uh, BPZ going with the mid push strat again. They're going to try to pull them away from the objective while they're warding it up. And, of course, you have to respond oh, until no. unless you want to give up something. But they're being surrounded, Rare Adam. Yeah, they're on the wrong side of the map here. Going to try and shut them down here. Nice little Ornhorn going to land onto two. Vanal and that frontline Gandwarf taking a lot of damage. Two kills, though, for Fire Mana. But here comes Vanal looking for even more. Jacob Duda's already dead. Vanal just going to be looking to pump out that damage. in that front line is going to be absolutely shut down. Fire Mana gets caught. And now Vanal looking for even more. There's the triple kill picked up by Vanal. Going to try and continue this fight. Shenpai is being a pest once again in that frontline champion. Red can't do anything. It's a quadra kill picked up. Vanal looking for That's going to be the pentakill for. Or pentakill Timo, please, Vanal. They got the pentakill. They didn't have to kill a Timo, and they're going to win this game. <laughs> the namesake pulls through, and Vanal said, I'm going to take this game into our hands. Gets the pentakill, wins the team fight, fighting right over the wall. BBZ, with their high risk gameplay, end up tossing a tails in that last fight. And the respawns are going to come in, but I don't know if they're going to make it here where Adam Vanal's alive. They're just going to oh, go for more kills. Yeah. No. Jacob Dudar has absolutely no chance. Add up a sixth in a row for Vanal. Dak's going to have to try and hold the line, but there's absolutely nothing the Kindred can do. Pentakill, Timo, please, with a fantastic victory over BBZ. Blue by Yuzu, not able to stand up. It's PTP going to 2-0 on the season. 
Yeah, that is a great start. Uh, I think that a lot of people were expecting other teams to get their 2-0 and zero this week, but Pentakill Teemo are the ones who are going to prove to be the victor. And, I mean, it's a great showing. A good start is always great for the season here. And Vainal showing that they are going to be a very serious threat in this league. And it might be... It might be, you know, a start for everyone thinking, yeah, we might have to start banning more Vanal champions. Kaisa, that might be another ban on the docket here, Rare. Yeah, I think we have to give a shout out to Thrashlight though as well, though, who was really enabling all of this play. The entire team of PTP just came around a Vanal and enabled a Vanal to pop off in this game. You know, 18 out of the 28 kills. And then you look at the damage on the opposite side, and we have to give a shout out to Fireman, who did absolute yeah. work on that opposite side, really carrying the weight of BBZ, trying to sort of lift them over the line. But unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. At the end of the day, an incredible game. You know, back and forth, we talked about that early game sinusoidal wave, but once it got to a certain point, PTP showed that they had the guts, they had the power to continue pushing forward, and they end up with a notch in that victory column. But of course, which is it for now. We should have an interview with someone from the side of PTP. Just double checking. It is Gandwarf who will be doing that interview. So we'll have that for you in just a little bit. We'll be right back with that one right after this break.
Hello, folks, and welcome back to the interview desk. I am your friendly neighborhood jackass, Sharkin, and I've got uh, Pet to Kill Timo Pleases Ganondorf joining me over here. Ganondorf, how does it feel taking that win off of Blue Bayou Z? Uh, feels great. Feels great. Yeah? No. Uh, was it was that kind of like how you expected it to go? Because I know it was back and forth quite a bit throughout the course of that match. Um, from like our scouting and stuff, like it, we knew this was gonna be like a pretty rough game because like we got wins on some of the teams that they beat, but we also got wins on some of the teams that they lost to. So and like the standings itself, like looking at previous ones, like it's it's kind of crazy and it's hard to figure out like what teams you're gonna match up really well against. Um, but the actual game itself, like, we felt pretty good uh, on the early game. Um, we had that one little mishap by, like, Dragon, but then we, we brought it back and felt great. Yeah, no, it definitely seemed like it was, uh, even though it was going back and forth, at the very end, y'all got some really good team fights and some really powerful wins right there. Uh, so I, I've got to ask you, who do you think is the hard carry for your team? Is it going to be Vanal, who got the first pentakill of the season? Uh, and, or is it the Malzahar, ProDH's Malzahar, as he was just in the back, you know, just doing Malzahar things and keeping that pressure on that bot lane? Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, like, for our team, like, damage-wise carry, like, absolutely, it's going to be one of those two. Um, but honestly, I think, like, our, our synergy, um, just with team fighting in general, um, has gotten a lot better, and uh, the, the whole team kind of enables those two, those two to, to carry. So it's going to be kind of a coin flip between the two of them. All right. And how do you think the uh, the matchups are, are looking this season Go, going in now that the qualifiers are done? You've kind of gotten a taste for it. You know, is, is it going to be is, is there any particular team you think you kind of need to keep an eye on? Um, I mean, I like we always keep an eye out for INT because like we've we've always had back and forth with them. Um, BBZ was one that I thought was going to be pretty challenging. Um, Art of War, I thought was going to be like a 2-0 team. Uh, Fat Pikachu, I wasn't expecting where they're at. Um, so really, we're going to kind of watch out for Fat Pikachu and uh, hope we perform against them as well. All right. Well, that's certainly going to be something to keep an eye out for. I mean, it's kind of, you know, I think it's really funny. I just, I, again, I know I just mentioned it, but it's kind of hilarious that Pentacle Team of Please is the first team to get uh, the first pentakill of the season. And so it's like, I, I just, I got to give y'all props for that. Yeah. Way to way to go. Yeah, it feels great. I know, I know, uh, Fainal was, uh, very hyped for that. Absolutely. As they should be. All right. Well, Gandwarf, thank you so much for dropping by. Uh, greatly appreciate having you on here, uh, folks. Uh, so yeah, we'll I guess we'll see you next time. Yep. Always. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We've got In the Trees coming up, and it is going to be an exciting match. Don't go away.